So it looks like my wife was having some issues getting the Ionic started this morning. Let's take a look. Oh, well, that doesn't sound good. That's not good. I think the 12 volt battery shot. Well, that's not good. Let's take a look under the hood. Okay, so as far as I could tell, it appears that the 12 volt battery possibly has gone bad. Um, so right now I just have the uh, battery tender on it and I'm going to go ahead and try to start it up. It doesn't need a lot of power to start the vehicle because it's an EV. So we're going to go ahead and um, take a few minutes here, let it charge up, and then we'll uh, give it a shot. See what happens. It's going to probably be going back to the dealership. Alright, so battery's been charging about five minutes or so. Let's go ahead and take a look and see if we can start the car. Uh, key not detected. All right, so we're still getting key not detected. It looks like it's going to take a few more minutes of uh, charging here. Yep. All right, let's give it a few more minutes. All right, so I tried starting the car again after about 10 minutes, and this is what I'm getting. Stop vehicle and check brakes. Uh, we got the orange car there. It's definitely not able to uh, start up properly. Um, so this is very weird. This is not good. Um, I think I'm gonna let it charge for a little longer and then we're gonna Try to see if we can get it started. So let's uh, come back to this in a few more minutes All right, well, we've been charging up for about 30 minutes or so. So let's see if we get any more luck now Starting the car That doesn't Nope not good. Hmm. All right, I think I'm just gonna let the, uh, let's turn this off. Okay. Well, I think I'm just gonna let this thing charge overnight and then we will have to revisit in the morning. Okay, so it's been on the charger for about an hour or so and it says that it is now fully charged. Let's fully charged. So let's see if the car, We'll start now. And key. Key not detected again. Hmm. Let's do this then. Nope, it is still not working right. Well, that's not good. I guess we'll have to continue looking into this. Okay, so I hooked up one of these 12-volt uh, booster packs to the battery now. And now I'm able to actually get the car started here. Um, I'm still getting that uh, orange car there. I don't know if that's because I have the battery pack hooked up to it. Or if maybe because the hood's open. But basically now it just shuts off. And that's pretty much it. So if I hold the brake and hit the ignition, check brakes. Still getting a check brake thing. I was able to disengage the parking brake uh, just a moment ago, so at least I got that far. Uh, let me keep tinkering with this, see what I can find. Okay, so it's a couple days later now and I'm still trying to work on a solution for the Ionix 12 volt battery being dead. Um, at this point, I've already called up Hyundai. Uh, the 12 volt battery unfortunately only has a three year 36,000 mile warranty on it. So that goes out the window. I had also purchased an extended warranty through Vroom when I had purchased the car from them. Uh, it turns out that warranty does not cover uh, 12 volt batteries. Uh, among other normal wear and tear items, brakes, tires, so on and so forth. Uh, so the next thing I got here is a 12 volt battery that we are going to be hooking up to the current uh, battery 
and to see if we could get 12 volts to the car to see if the car reads that properly. So what we're going to do is we're just going to basically jump uh, a 12 volt battery that I have to the current battery to see if I get 12 volts to the car and if it will accept that because we're only getting 8 volts off the current battery, which means we have some dead cells. It can't give me 12 volts anymore, so the car is now rejecting the battery. So if I can get a 12 volt battery connected to the car and get it started up, then I know that it's actually just the battery that's the issue and not something even worse. Because if it is something worse, then I ended up having to take it into the dealership. Because what I'm trying to avoid at this point is taking it into the dealership and basically them telling me this 12 volt battery is bad and they're going to charge me like $300 to install a 12 volt battery. So I'm going to try to avoid that by troubleshooting and then if I have to, I'm going to buy a 12 volt battery for this car. So anyway, let's get under the hood and take a look at what we need to do to make this happen. All right, so what we have here, our 12 volt battery in our car is just a 12 volt 40 amp hour battery that the Hyundai Ioniq uses. And here I have just a 12 volt, uh, that is an 18 amp hour. So it's about half the size, but it doesn't matter. It's fully charged, so that should give us enough to get the car started and running. So what else I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just, just jump you know, positive to positive and negative to negative, uh, put it in parallel to that battery. And hopefully that'll be enough to get the car to register the battery so let's hook this up and see where we can go okay so now that we are very safely connected positive to positive negative to negative we should be good to try to start the car and see what happens so let's get in the car and look all right so here we are here is the moment we're gonna hold the brake hit the power button oh, look at that we got a green car all right so that's a good thing that means that the 12 volt battery is dead and it won't put out that auxiliary battery saver used while parked. Yeah, except it didn't work because the battery's dead. It won't actually <laughs> charge it up past 12 volts. But anyway, it looks like we are good. Uh, system shutdown failed. Please, please reset system manually. All right, we'll have to see what that takes. Maybe just a uh, power button here. If that works. System shutdown failed. Please reset manually. All right, I'll have to see what that's all about. It might be some sort of reset procedure to get this back up and running again. So I'll have to look into that. Uh, maybe I just got to push the reset button that's here somewhere. Let me turn on some, some lights here. Oh, look, the lights actually work. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. Oh, oh, wait a minute. It appears to be turning on. Okay. Well, that's cool. Confirm. Well, this is good. This is a very good sign. So I think we're back up and running. We just got to get a new battery for the car. Okay, so right now the big battery in the car should be starting to charge uh, the battery under the hood. Of course, now that we have two batteries hooked up in parallel, it's trying to charge both of them, except for the main battery is probably so dead that it's probably not going to be able to charge anything anyway. But I'm going to get my multimeter, and we're going to take a look at what those batteries are showing as far as charging. So give me a second. Let me go grab that, and we'll take a look. All right, so we got the uh, the multimeter hooked up to the battery here, and we, we can see we have more than 14 volts. So that is with both batteries in parallel. So... That's a good sign, except it doesn't tell me if the actual old battery is getting more than 8 volts at this point. So what I'm going to have to do is turn the car off, unplug the uh, temporary battery just to see where we're at with that. And then um, from there, we can, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can determine whether or not, uh, you know, the, the original battery is going to charge up more than 8 volts. But I doubt it. But let's take a look. All right. So trying to do this with one hand here. Uh, hooking up that to positive, that to negative, and we are getting now just about 12 volts on the main battery. Um, interesting. So maybe my, uh, maybe my, uh, meter there, or excuse me, my, uh, battery tender, maybe it just stopped at 8 volts for some re weird reason. It looks like it's consistently trickling down, though, which is a bit of a concern. But let me get back in the car and start it up and see if we get, um... Uh, any more luck here because I'll be curious to see yeah that just keeps losing voltage it's probably not ideal definitely an old battery so let's take a look at what the car says 
Okay, well, next morning, and the uh, the Ionic is uh, is dead again. So obviously, we had a bit of a surface charge on it last night. Um, I just had to take this part of the handle off so I can use the manual key to unlock the door because I had locked it. Um, so now I got to probably go ahead and get a battery for the car. I assume at this point, it looks like we're going to need at least a battery. Um, hopefully, there's nothing else bigger wrong with the car um, like a power drain or something that might be causing this issue so i think the first thing i'm going to do since the battery is almost five years old i think what we're going to do is just get a battery for the car and see how the car acts there if that doesn't work it's an investment no big deal still going to have my appointment with the dealer in february so i'll still have to bring the car down to them to uh to see if this battery um or not the battery, to see if this electrical system is still an issue or not. So let's change out the battery, see how that is, and then we'll go from there. Well, slight turn of events here. So I've been in contact with the dealer and told them that I need to get the car in to get this battery replaced. And we made a deal that I would bring the car in and they would swap the battery out for me. Weird thing is, it's very hard to get this battery nowadays because they don't make this anymore. They don't make the the lead acid batteries, they make only the um, lithium batteries for this car now. Well, weirdly enough, as I jumped this car before a couple hours ago and had it sitting outside just, just running, just charging, and weirdly enough, I started getting a weird smell when I walked past the car and found out that there was smoke coming from the battery. Couldn't believe it. Scared the crap out of me. So I pulled it in real quick, and uh, yeah, it does appear that... Uh, the battery started to uh, started to go here, which is a bit of a concern. Um, so now I have to see how I'm going to get it down to the dealership in a couple days, because uh, I don't know if this battery is going to make it all the way down there. But um, you know, I think it's going to be okay for a short trip because it was kind of sitting outside for a few hours, just kind of sitting there. So hopefully, a short uh, you know eight mile trip shouldn't be too bad. So. I'm going to give it a little bit and keep an eye on this and see what happens to it. All right, well, today is the morning that I'm taking the Ionic to the Hyundai dealership. So I have to start the car real quick, uh, jump the car real quick. Then I have to drive there as quickly as possible before the battery starts to overheat and start smoking. Because uh, I don't want to be on the side of the road with a, a smoking battery, especially an electric car. That'll just hit the news or something. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get this jumped. and uh, We're going to get over to the dealership right away and then we are going to hopefully get some good news when we get there. All right, so stay tuned. Okay, well, we just started this journey here. We are um, not too far from the house. I got stuck at one of the one of the worst lights to be stuck at. Okay, we're finally going here. Um, I'm not smelling, I'm not smelling that sulfur smell yet, um, which is good, um, but I still got another like seven miles, eight miles to go, depending which way I wanna go. All right, well, I'm about a mile from the dealership and it's starting to creep into the cabin, that smell. It's like a sulfur, rotten egg smell. And um, it's, it's pretty bad. So let's hope that we make it perfectly fine and uh, <laughs> just a mile to go. We're so close. All right, well, dropped off the car at the dealership. So they were saying that they're still trying to locate a battery for the car because that a whole, you know, the lead battery is no longer available. They had to, you know, discontinue that. So they're putting the lithium batteries in the car now. It's an interstate part number, but they can't find where the battery is. They, they you know, it's just one of those things right now. So they're going to do some research, try to find the battery. Um, and then they're going to eventually get the battery in and install it and, and hopefully, um, you know, we'll, we'll hear something back. But I'm thinking at least two weeks before I see that car again at the minimum, but we'll see. But anyway, I'll keep you up to date as soon as I hear something. All right, well, it's been about a week since we dropped off the Ionic at the Hyundai dealership. And uh, I just wanted to call and check and see if they had gotten an update on if the battery was going to come in sometime this week. Um, and the service manager informed me that it looks like it's not even going to be a lithium battery, as I was told previously, that it still is a lead acid battery for that car and that the battery should be in this week. Hopefully tomorrow is what they're saying. So we'll just see, see what happens and, uh, we'll see if they can put a new battery in the car. But anyway, stay tuned. It keeps going. So just a quick update on the Hyundai. 
Uh, it has now been at the dealership for over two weeks. And as of yesterday, which was Friday, they have officially said that they got a, well, they hope they got the correct battery incoming to the dealership, hopefully early next week. And they'll put that in the car. And then hopefully we'll have the correct battery in the car after almost a full month of actually not having the car uh, being usable. So we're just gonna wait and see uh, if that's the correct battery and we'll hopefully pick it up early next week. So we wait and we see. All right, well, just picked up the Ionic at the Hyundai dealership. They had the car for three weeks, not including the week and a couple days I had the car trying to work on it with the battery being dead. So here we are over a month without the Ionic um, and it's nice to have it back. Unfortunately, it was a basically a $400 battery. Um, and I'll go over all that and I'll give you the model number of the battery once I get home and get situated and we'll kind of go over exactly you know what they did and which is basically just replace the 12 volt battery but we'll go over all that in just a little bit after i get the car home there's the ionic finally home after over a month without being used so here we are finally home with the ionic so i was just looking at the dates so we had the initial problem with the car on january 17th today is february 22nd so it took over one full month to get this car a 12 volt battery, which is ridiculous. Now to kind of go back to what we were talking about initially was I had spent about a week or so to try to find a battery for this car, ordering one only to be turned down, being told that they couldn't ship me a battery. So I had no choice but to go to the dealership. And now it took the dealership over three weeks to get a battery for this car. So now while we got the car back in the garage. It has cost me $400 for a battery. Now let's take a look at this $400 battery. Yep, that's it. So $400 for a battery. And let's take a look at what it is real quick. It's a flooded battery. It is a lead acid flooded battery. It's not an AGM. It's not a lithium battery. Uh, they, had, they had hinted that it may have been a lithium battery getting replaced. But this is now the new part number for it because the old part number doesn't exist anymore. So if you need a 12 volt ionic battery, uh, and this is a 2017, I, this will probably be the same for the 18 and 19, I assume, but you know, make sure you do your research. But there you go, 00275 26,000 is the new uh, battery replacement for the Hyundais. So quite ridiculous, but there we go. There is our battery. Um, so after. Over a month of trying to get a battery for this car, we finally got it. So pretty crazy, right? I mean, it took us over a month to get a battery for this car. Just a standard 12 volt, nothing special battery. And you know, the fact that it took that long, I mean, it didn't matter where you looked up this battery, you could not find it. I mean, if you looked um, on Interstate Battery, which supposedly this is an Interstate Battery, believe it or not, this is actually made by Interstate. Uh, part number is CMF40L, I believe is the interstate battery part number. But you can't find it on Interstate Battery's website. You can't look it up. That part number doesn't exist. If you type in that part number, the only thing you get is Hyundai's websites, uh, dealer websites that show this battery listed as the replacement battery for a Hyundai. It doesn't say which Hyundai. It just shows it listed as a Hyundai part. So it's impossible to try to find one of these batteries. But if you come across the same problem that I did, at least now you'll know what part number it is that you need to get for your car. But yeah, that was that was awful, but at the same time, you know, this is this is what you have to deal with being an EV owner, early adopters, especially with a car that's as uh, rare as this, I guess you could say, because they didn't really make that many of them and uh, they didn't make many of them, period. Uh, and of course they were only sold in the state of California. So this is kind of weird on this side of the country seeing a car like this. And my dealership is not even really uh, certified to be EV uh, repaired. Uh, they're just there to be hybrid technicians and, and of course, you know, gas technicians. So this was an interesting experience. Um, I hope this helps you out if you happen to come across the same 12 volt battery issue that I just did. And uh, you know, this is an experience that we need to share with a lot more people because a lot more people are going to have these issues. Now that these cars are getting a little bit older, this is a 2017. So it's just over four years now, which means that it's going to start having these weird issues like the 12 volt battery going bad. There's nothing you could do about a 12 volt battery, especially a lead acid 12 volt battery. That's normally what they get three to five years. So 
this is just something we have to deal with. But hopefully this helped you out. If it did, give it a thumbs up just below the video. Check us out on our website, techmotoring.com, on Twitter, at techmotoring, on Facebook, facebook.com slash techmotoring. And, you know, subscribe to the channel as well if you are an EV owner, enthusiast, or an Ionic owner in this case, uh, because I have a lot more videos about the Ionic. So you can take a look back at some of those and uh, see if any of those help you out as well if you have any issues with your Ionic. But anyway, please like and subscribe. And remember, welcome to the future and welcome to Tech Motoring. And we'll see you on the next episode.